Well, hi there, everybody, and welcome to the Coach No Free Show for the regular season finale, week 12, as the Pioneers get set to take on St. Francis U with everything to play for. Of course, coming off their first loss in conference play to Duquesne, 28-24. And Coach, I know that the opportunity was there to win the NEC championship outright, but you're going into Saturday with an opportunity still to at least win a co-championship with a win. That's what you get. And combine that potentially with a CCSU win over Duquesne and the prize is right there for the taking to the FCS playoff berth. So how do you gear up for a game like this after, obviously it didn't go as you had hoped out in Pittsburgh, yet you have everything to play for going into this week? Well, yeah, I, I think the kids know that. I think they understand it and they know what's at stake. Um, you know, you, you're almost, yeah, it's like you have a second chance, you know. Uh, I don't want to say a redo, but you have a chance to be co-NEC champs, which is something if you had said to the kids, hey, listen, uh, the day we checked in, August 2nd, if you could be sitting there last game of the year playing St. Francis for a chance at being at the very worst co-champs of the NEC conference, would you sign for that and would everybody be in? And I think you'd get pretty much everybody to raise their hand and say yes. Um, it's a great opportunity and our kids know it. Um, we were picked, you know, sixth or seventh in the conference this year and here we sit in a three-way tie with Duquesne and Central Connecticut. And I told the guys uh, the other day, I really don't care what happens in New Britain this weekend. That's out of our hands and we're not worried about that or even looking at that. Our concern is to focus on St. Francis, handle our business, and at the very worst, you're co-champs in the NEC conference and it's something that you work for year round to be, uh, have a shot at being a conference champion. 28-24 was the final score against Duquesne, but you guys mounted a comeback mm -hmm. in the second half. There were some opportunities there, some passes that didn't go your way, um, but you go into this week knowing that in a tight one, you still have that kind of heart of a champion to make it a game and come back against a tough Duquesne team. How did how you responded in the second half move into this week? Well, I, th I think that's why we're sitting at 4-1 in the conference. If you go back and you look at the makeup of our team, you know, we have tough, hard-nosed kids that fight to the bitter end. Uh, they played 60 minutes. Um, there were times where we didn't execute well in the first half. Um, it wasn't for a lack of effort. It wasn't for a lack of motivation. It was just we didn't execute well in the first half. We didn't do our job, and we weren't doing things that the coaches were teaching us, but we were playing hard. And that's what kept us in the game, and that's what got us back into the game in the second half. We have tough kids that play hard, and they believe in each other. They play for one another, um, and they're never out of it. And, you know, when you have that type of team and that makeup, it gives you a fighting chance. And we had a chance. We had a chance in the fourth quarter to take the lead or even to tie the game when it was 28-21, and we weren't able to make the play. Duquesne did when it counted, and hats go off to them that they were able to finish the game with a win. Your ability to execute offensively in the run game has kept you in those kind of games and really been the big part of your offense down the stretch run here. Julius Chestnut with another NEC Rookie of the Week, Jordan Meacham, another great game. I mean, your one-two tandem of Chestnut and Meacham behind that offensive line that is opening up some big holes just gets better and better every week. Why? Um, I, I think it goes back to the coaches. You know, um, Coach Gardner and Coach Gunny Smith are doing a great job um, putting the kids in the right position. Um, and they're talented. Don't get me wrong. We have two backs that are very talented, and you can see that week in and week out. And Coach Gunny Smith's done a great job getting that offensive line to gel with the chemistry and to play hard. And they're physical right now. And, you, and when you can run the ball like that, like we've been able to do the last four weeks in a row, um, it makes for a chance to win in a winning formula. Um, like I said, it also opens up the pass game a little bit for Duke and O'Neal and some of those other guys. But uh, they've done a great job. They're tough, like I said, they're tough, hard nosed kids, and they're very talented. Uh, those guys up front are, are just physical and they're doing a job. And then you can give them the ball to 7 or 22 and they just find the hole. Um, both of them run hard. They do both have breakaway speed. And uh, they make great cuts and they have great vision. And you just give them a crease and the next thing you know it, it's 6, 7 yards. And maybe you look and it's into the secondary. And next thing you know it, they're, they're running for 40 or 50. So it's been great. And uh, they're very talented. And I think those coaches have done a great job putting them in that situation. So Jordan Meacham obviously is just getting his career started. Or excuse me, Julius Chestnut is just getting his career started. Jordan Meacham's coming back for another year. You've got a lot of playmakers coming back next year. But for the this year's graduating senior class, Kevin Duke, Andrew O'Neill, and, and their teammates that have been here uh, for four and five years, this is going to be their last game at Campus Field. How important are those guys to this program? And how much personally 
do they mean to you, and do you want to see them go out winners in their final game? Oh, I, I mean, that's that's what you want. I mean, you want a storybook ending. You're talking about two kids that, you know, came here or didn't play as their freshman year, red-shirted. Kevin Duke sat behind RJ Noel for three years. Um, to see the success that they're having now and, and what they've done together, uh, their leadership, uh, what they've brought to the Sacred Heart Football Foundation has been phenomenal. And you want them to leave in this storybook ending, hopefully with a chance to at least be co-NEC champs. Um, and I want them to leave. Again, it goes back to the kids in the program and the type of kids that we have. I f feel very strongly, I, and I told the team this the other day, this is one of the proudest teams I've been associated with, and I want nothing more than not just the seniors, but there's some kids on this team that you really want to see get a ring or an, a hoist that championship trophy at some point in time because they're just they're great kids to have. They're good for your program. They've done everything you ask them to do both on and off the field. They work hard, um, and it's a joy coaching them, and you want to see them have that um, success or that trophy at the end, and it, not just for the seniors, but for everybody, you know, and that's associated within our program right now. But, um, you know, Duke and O'Neill, this will be their last time, and like it was when Doobie and RJ left. You know, it's a sad time to see them move on, um, but you're thankful that they have played for you for four years, you were able to coach them, and whatever they choose to do beyond uh, Sacred Heart, they're going to be very successful men, and I'm proud to say that I was their coach for four years. And we're looking forward to seeing them play on Saturday. Uh, it is there for the taking, as you said. You win, so you are in control. You win that game, and you're going to uh, win a trophy. What do you have to do? What are the keys here against St. Francis U? Well, on defense, we got to shut down both receivers. Um, I think they're, you know, two of the better ones in the conference, if not all of SCS. Um, you know, they, they've got one of them's leading the conference in touchdowns and, and catches. Um, he's been a four-year starter, and he's tremendous. Um, and the quarterback's very good. Um, their defense is very good. Uh, they bring a lot of pressure. They're all over the field, and they're coming from everywhere. They're tough. Uh, they play hard. Um, and offensively, we got to be able to run the ball and take the shots when we can and, and be able to score when we get into the red zone. Um, and I think it's going to come down to protecting the ball, not being on the minus side of the turnover battle, being able to score when we get in the red zone and defensively shutting down the quarterback and the two receivers. All right, Coach. Can't wait for Saturday. Me it's going to be a wild one, and we're looking forward to it. Yep, thank you. Coach Mark Nofri, we thank him for joining us all year long here on our Coach Nofri show. It's been a lot of fun, and hopefully there's more football to play. Coming up Saturday, it's the regular season finale. Senior Day ceremonies before the game, and then at noon, Sacred Heart against St. Francis U. If the Pioneers win, they win a share of the NEC championship. If they win and CCSU wins, Pioneers will go to the FCS playoffs. We hope you'll join us at Campus Field for the 12 p.m. kickoff, and if not, we have the call for you on NEC Front Row.